practice with me and please repeat the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clerk, if you will uh, please read the roll. Call the roll. Thank you, Mayor. Commissioner Campana? Here. Commissioner Frazier? Here. Commissioner Hill? Here. Commissioner Schlegel? Here. Commissioner Schmidt? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Reynolds? Here. Mayor Stonehouse? Here. I do have some announcements. Uh, number one, the public hearing. Oh, no, I was going to give public announcements. No, we'll do the agenda. Trip you up at the beginning always. Commissioners, we have an agenda in front of us. I would need a motion for approval, please. Uh, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Reynolds. I move that the, uh, the agenda be approved. Uh, Commissioner Campana. I second that. Any further discussion? None. Hearing none, all those in favor say yes. 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 Any opposed say no. <coughs> motion passes 7-0. Now I can do my announcements. First off, uh, the public hearing that was scheduled tonight for the Land Development Code will actually be done at our next meeting, and that will be at the uh, February 11th meeting. So Land Development Code public hearing will be done on the 11th of February. We do have a number of volunteer committee and board vacancies. Uh, these folks that serve on these committees do us a world of good. They are critical to how the city operates. I cannot be more emphatic in asking and requesting folks to step forward and, and take a position on a committee. But here's what we have for openings. Board of Zoning Appeals, we have three. Board of Review, three. Brownfield Redevelopment Authority, two. Harbor Advisory Committee, three. Harbor or Housing Commission, two. Investment Advisory Board, two. Local Development Finance Authority, two. Local Officers Compensation Commission, one opening, and the Marquette County Transit Authority, one opening. Uh, applications are available either online or you can stop by the manager's office and they would be able to give you a hard copy. That brings us down to boards and committees too, and we have a, a great opportunity now to welcome a new member. And this would be uh, Barbara Wright, if you would step forward, please. And this would be for the Board of Zoning Appeals. Thank you very much for stepping forward. I just got done with talking about how important that is, and it's a pleasure that you work or are. And I do have, in recognition of that, an official City of Marquette pin. <coughs> and I would ask you to wear it every day. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Our clerk now has to show you. That's great. Thank you. <laughs> And I will faithfully discharge the duties of my office of the Board of Zoning Appeal of the City of Marquette to the best of my ability. We need to recognize two outgoing members also, uh, Diana Magnuson from the Arts and Culture mm -hmm. Advisory Committee and Mark Fuller, Fuller from the Board of Zoning Appeals. If both of you could please step forward. Diana, in, in recognition of your service, I have this very lovely uh, plaque from the city, this certificate. Can and you wear it always? No, <laughs> but you have to wear City of Marquette t shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and if it doesn't fit, or the is size. This is my color? This is your color. Okay. If, if it doesn't fit, please go into the city manager's okay. office and you'll, you'll find one that's the right size. Okay. Uh, do you have any comments that you'd like to make? Should I make it too? No, please do. Okay. Make it to Mark. Sorry, Mark. <laughs> um, I'd like to confirm what I'm sure 
the city already realize is that Marquette has an amazing arts and culture committee and manager. Tina Harris, the manager, carries a vision globally expanding arts and culture across the city, the county, and the state, bringing more arts and festivals and therefore people to the area. She builds communications with these other um, communities and awareness and support. Her ability to problem solve and think outside the box builds solid programs for our arts and culture present and future. The committee shares her purpose. They are co I loved working with them. It was really something to watch, the professionalism of them. Responsible, creative, and feet on the ground, they back her with time and offering bold and insightful input. I am proud of them and honored to have served on this committee for the last several years. If you want to work with a productive, supportive, good feeling committee, that's the one you want. And the others. <laughs> City and an official city of Marquette Church. Thank you. And again, you can change your size with the city manager. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. That brings us to item three appointments. Uh, we have a number of folks to appoint uh, to other committees now, and if uh, I can have a motion from the commissioner to appoint. Commissioner Schlegel. I'd like you to do all of them or just one at a time? All of them. Okay. <clears throat> Make the motion to appoint uh, Margaret Brum to the Local Development Finance Authority for an ex unexpired term ending 8 1 of 2022. John Sonderegger to Parks and Recreation Advisory Board for a term ending 0 1 29 of 22. Brian LaChapelle to the Planning Commission for a term starting 2000, or, um, sorry, excuse me. Uh, for a term starting 215 of 19 and ending of 215 of 22. And John, please help me with this, Brahms. Brahms. Thank you. Uh, to the Local Officers Compensation Commission for an unexpired term ending 8 1 of 25. And finally, but not least, Marshall Wolf to the Harbor Advisory Committee for an unexpired term ending 06 1 of 21. Um, Mayor Pro Tem Reynolds. I second that. I have a motion and a second. Um, but before that, any further comments, Commissioner Schlegel? Yeah, actually, I'm, I'm going to jump on it. Um, I was able to work with, uh, with Mark on the BZA when I did some time there. I'm going to jump back and say thank you for your time and, and, and all of your efforts. Um, I was not able to work with uh, Diana, but I'm, I'm already taken by your enthusiasm thank you um, and I really want to say thank you to these people that are volunteering their time and energy because this is what really uh, the polity of Marquette is all about and I'm just so excited to see these positions being filled and uh, and the enthusiasm that comes with it so thank you for your, your time and service Mayor Pro Tem no Paul said it all any other commissioner comments hearing none all those commissioners in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 Any commissioner opposed by no. Hearing none, motion passes 7-0. That brings us down to item four, reappointments. And in this case, I will read them. Uh, that would be Evan Bonzolf to Parks and Recreation Advisory Board for a term ending uh, 01 of 29-22. Evan Bonsall to Brownfield Redevelopment Authority for a term ending 02-01-22. Perry David Allen II to the Brownfield Redevelopment Authority for a term ending 02-01-22. Uh, commissioners, may I have a motion? Com I Commissioner Hill. I move that we reappoint. That we reappoint uh, as read to these three to commit to these two authorities. May have a second. Commissioner Smith. Second. Commissioner Hill, any comments? Uh, again, just thank you very much for returning for your service and 
excited to, s to work with you over the next couple of years. Thank you very much. Commissioner Smith. Commissioner Hill covered it all. Thank you. <laughs> Any other commissioner comments? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 Any commissioner uh, against, please signify by saying no. Hearing none, motion passes 7-0. That brings us to public comments. Public comments may not exceed three minutes per person. Please state your name and physical address when making public comments. Anyone wishing to address the commission? Good evening, my name's Katrina Keel. I live at 24 White Oak Drive in Marquette Township. I am here on behalf of Hiawatha Music Co-op as board president. Um, thank you very much, first of all, for your time tonight. Um, many of you know that Hiawatha Music Co-op has held its 40th annual music festival, um, 35 years of which have been held at Tourist Park in Marquette, um, which we're very grateful for. Thousands attend and hundreds volunteer during this family-oriented traditional music festival each July. <coughs> um, it is our mission to provide and promote traditional music and dance, to educate and inform the community on traditional music and encourage the appreciation of such music through the facility of our music festival as well as annual events year-round. We couldn't do it without support. We have a lot of support in the community, a lot of support here at the city. And Hiawatha thrives due to this support, due to our strong collaborative efforts and a shared vision for the community of Marquette. For example, the new Winter Roots Festival, which will be held in February, was a collaboration of numerous entities, including the City of Marquette Arts and <coughs> Culture Center, the Peter White Public Library, and the Beaumere UP Heritage Center at Northern Michigan University. This work group organized itself in an entire event in only a few months, thanks to its longstanding and strong partnerships. After attending the meeting with Mr. Dick Horton, your civil engineer, and viewing the results of the community survey, we saw an opportunity again to leverage those strong partnerships to meet the needs of the residents um, of the city of Marquette. The Hiawatha Music Co-op is not only an organization that has historically valued um, has historically valued and supports uh, including the efforts of the city of Marquette um, as well as the plan for an open air pavilion at Tourist Park, which is in the master plan. Um, in the past, we have even secured funding for such a project. Uh, we have a rendering in the back of the room um, from 2001 that was put together by a previous Hiawatha Board of Directors as a result of planning sessions with our civil engineer, electrician, and architect. Thank you, Susan. We're excited with the results of the community survey and the support city residents have voiced for more outdoor music opportunities like that of Hiawatha Music Festival. We would like to help build on the momentum generated by the new master plan to not only benefit our organization, but by allowing many other organizations the opportunity to hold revenue making events at Tourist Park. We ask that you please continue to dedicate time and effort to make this project a reality for us and for the citizens of Marquette, and that you can include Hiawatha Music Co-op as a resource moving forward. Again, thank you for your work to keep Marquette a de destination full of culture, music, outdoor preservation, and tourism. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to address the commission? Hi, Kerry Gottlieb, 1076 South Lake Street, Marquette. Um, I guess I'm addressing you tonight as the outgoing chair of the Parks and Rec Advisory Board. This is my last act as outgoing chair. I'm also secretary of the now defunct ad hoc committee on the five-year rec plan. This is my last act for that one too. Uh, I'm also president of the No Cayman on Trail Network. Um, and unfortunately, I think that's mine for life. I would like to t ask you tonight to uh, support the five-year Parks and Rec Master Plan. We worked hard on it. We're the whole group of us, Parks and Rec, and the Ad Hoc Committee. Um, I think we did a great job, and I think we spoke for the uh, citizens of Marquette. I would request that you uh, approve it as written. Um, I think everybody there did a great job. and. Uh, love to answer any questions you have for me if they come up. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else to address the commission? Oh, 
Okay. Hi, I'm, so, I'm Charlie West, 440 East Prospect. Appreciate you having the, uh, the public comments. I don't have a whole lot to say here tonight. I'm just here to climb on the green burial bandwagon. Um, I don't know where or when the time will come or where I'll be when the time comes, but if I'm here, I would like to be buried in an environmentally friendly way and one that's in harmony with my um, faith. I'm a retired United Methodist minister, so I consider myself a Christian, though I don't um, agree with all those who are claiming the name in the public right now. But um, this certainly would be in line with my faith to be buried as a part of the creation and to be able to just go back into the creation from whence I came. So I'm sure that we'll be coming along more with more thoughts and reasons and all that sort of stuff, but I just wanted to let you know that yes, there is. Um, there is a desire, there is interest, there are people in the Marquette community that would like to be buried in an environmentally friendly way. So I encourage you to keep uh, thinking about that. Thanks. Hi, I'm Scott Stewart, uh, 530 East Michigan Street. Um, representing Moosewood Nature Center from their board. Um, I have to write, read my notes here. Um, Presque Isle is often called the uh, gem of Marquette City Parks, and we've been pleased and honored to be a part of the Presque Isle scene. Uh, we've been a nature center here in Marquette for 22 years, and just have enjoyed the opportunity to use the old growth forest, the Great Lakes dunes, and shoreline and uh, the Sphagnum Bog as a means of providing interpretation for visitors and residents of the community for doing school programs and um, programs for the community. Um, we have had just an unparalleled opportunity to work there and have appreciated uh, over the past few uh, days to be able to um, work with Mr. Swenson and uh, looking ahead at the future of the building where we are currently housed and uh, hope that we can continue to provide uh, the opportunity in uh, Marquette to put give the services that we currently give to, uh, to Marquette. Um, We've made a few um, improvements. Uh, we're in a building that, granted, was uh, originally constructed for uh, one season use and have uh, expanded to being able to use it year round uh, with some uh, additional work and have plans to continue to make some improvements there. But look forward to uh, seeing what your plans are in terms of possibly uh, creating a little different structure there that might welcome people to the island in a way that uh, is a little more um, in keeping with uh, the rustic uh, views that we have there. So uh, we look forward to working with you in the future and hope that we'll be able to maintain our spot on the island as uh, an interpreter of uh, an amazing natural resources uh, resource that we have here in Marquette. So thank you for the opportunity to, for us to be out at the island and to work with you in the future to continue to provide what we do. So thank you very much. Hi, uh, my name is Evan Bonzel, 506 West Hewitt Avenue. Uh, I just wanted to, first of all, thank you uh, all for reappointing, voting to reappoint me to the Marquette Brownfield Redevelopment Authority and the uh, Parks and Recreation Advisory Board. Um, uh, it's been a, an honor and I've learned so much serving on those boards uh, in the last couple of years and I'm looking forward uh, to continuing to serve the city. Um, I also just wanted to urge you all to, uh, like Carrie said, uh, support the Parks and Recreation Master Plan. It's a pr the product of a lot of really hard work um, by the uh, advisory, the, the ad hoc committee that was put together to assemble it and, and the Parks and Rec Advisory Board. And I'm particularly excited by the, uh, some of the projects in that master plan, including the, the prospect of having uh, some accessible uh, accessibility mats at the public beaches in town to make sure that people um, of all abilities in Marquette are able to access the public beaches that we have. Um, and also, of course, the, lake, uh, the uh, lighthouse project is very exciting as well. Um, and finally, I just really wanted to thank Kerry. He has been, uh, it's been truly an honor to be working with him on the Parks and Rec Board uh, for the last year and a half now or so. And Kerry's uh, provided really incredible leadership to our board. He is uh, term limited after serving for nine years and giving nine years of his time to the city. And so uh, I just wanted to say thank you so much, Carrie. And I don't know if this is in order, but if we could all maybe give him a round of applause, I think he deserves it. So. Hi, 
I'm Laura McDonald, um, 136 Hardwood Lane in Nagani. I'm here, I'm hoping this is the right time to present this, uh, looking for the local governing body resolution for charitable gaming licenses. Um, I'm the board president for a nonprofit called Start the Cycle. Um, the state requires that we're recognized within the city of Marquette um, as a nonprofit, and there is a form that needs to be sent back to the charitable gaming with a vote um, by your board asking that we be recognized um, doing business as a nonprofit in Marquette. Good evening. My name is Lenny Scheibel, and my address is 2722. Scenic Drive, apartment 309, Marquette in the Township. Um, my wife and I are here tonight to hear some of your discussion about what's going on with the master plan and to continue to let you know that we appreciate the efforts that the city has engaged in in terms of making some of our parks and facilities more accessible for our community members. I spent some time looking around just recently and not all communities are doing that. It's not a necessarily a priority. Many communities are doing more, but they have more resources. So we understand some of the challenges that you all have to deal with. But as I looked at the survey and the results of the survey, most of the items, if you go down through the top 10, are at 10% and above, up to uh, about 40%. And in that 9% range, what we have is we have probably five or six items listed and access to outdoor swimming is in that group. What I would ask you all to do as you continue to look at this and discuss this is to please keep in mind that the number of people who cannot get to the water is not significant enough. The number of people who care about, live with, assist those people who would like to get to the water is never going to be sufficient to move itself into the top 10. I believe it's your responsibility to take a look at this in a, a very deep way and to consider being advocates for those who cannot and will not get that opportunity because of the way things happen in a public survey. So I would implore you to think about that as you make some very tough decisions about what resources are going to be spent where and I would encourage you to make sure that if there is any question that you reach out to the community, the, subs the community that um, has access issues down the road. Uh, my wife and I have been dealing with this for about eight years now. There are people in this community who've been dealing with it for a lot longer. Many of you may have people in your family that have accessibility issues. If you don't, I can promise you, if it happens, your view of this, your worldview of this is going to change significantly. But I would ask you in the meantime to consider strongly advocating for those who would like to have that beach access, that water access above and beyond what you've already done. And we appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Kristen Cambenzi, 1135 County Road 492 in Marquette Township. <coughs> um, I just wanted to talk towards the Parks and Rec Master Plan. Um, we were, I spend a good portion of my, my time at Lakeview Arena. Uh, with three boys in hockey, uh, most of my waking hours it seems like are at Lakeview Arena. So we were very happy to see some of the improvements that are in the Parks and Rec Master Plan in there. Um, but one thing that did kind of, um, I don't want to say bother me, but um, regarding uh, Lakeview Arena losing money, uh, if you look at your own um, budget, um, if you look at the amount of money that ICE rental brings in, it's almost uh, $400,000 a year that ICE rental brings into to the city. Um, and ICE is only in for seven months. But that is enough money to pay for the power, the natural gas, the water, and the storm water for that building for the entire year. So to say that Lakeview doesn't make money, I mean, our ice time is covering those costs to run the building. Uh, the rest of the costs in your budget go towards, you know, 194000 of salaries and wages, 
uh, and all kinds of different things, including office supplies, fuel, credit card transaction fees, um, a lot of other things that are that relate to the city's personnel. Um, so, I mean, Lakeview does bring in money and take care of, you know, keeping the lights on and all that other stuff. So, um, I just wanted to make sure that that was made aware of. So, thank you. Thank Jeff Barrow, 350 East Ridge Marquette, to speak on item eight. These are my opinions. The board handled the Hockeyville situation well with one huge exception. If the sink doesn't fit the arena's accessible bathroom, get another one sooner. There is such a thing as overnight delivery even up here in the boondocks. It's a wonder any event can legally be held there without an accessible bathroom. Why did no one mention this? It's reminiscent of this board's mishandling of the missing sidewalk squares at 340 East Ridge. This board must get more cognizant of people with disabilities. We'd expect more from our older members and the one whose parent used a, wheel a wheelchair. Mr. Angeli provided acceptable reasons for the public's other arena concerns, recommending we wait for matching grants and spend the money most wisely. However, where was this thinking when 4,000 tax dollars were wasted to cut every living tree out of South Beach Park? He also laughed upon mentioning the word bathroom. And his joking around is, is more important than someone in a wheelchair not having a legal bathroom to use. What's so funny about a bathroom? We're all human. We all use them. This is the same manager who on December 17th audaciously interrupted a member during public comment and refused to apologize when this was reported January 14th. Ms. Hill apologized off the record, but she wasn't to blame. Incredible how the women in here are more manly than the men are. An embarrassment to us all. Then there's Mr. Stonehouse telling a woman she needs to address the commission when he's looking down for half of public comment doing unrelated work. Realize that I know better than most how difficult these meetings are to chair, tougher than it appears to any audience member. Yet to space out the only two business items on an agenda is unacceptable and suggests Mr. Stonehouse's ill preparedness. If he'd read his packet through, he couldn't have missed those two supplements. Members who aren't prepared are urged not to show up because they can do more harm than good, especially on land use issues. The bestowment of a certificate to Mr. Stonehouse was likely well-deserved, aside from the fact that he tends to embellish stories to earn political points, for example, with the Coast Guard and our fire department, for the record. The, cer the certificate ought to have been delayed until the end of his term because awarding arrogance can be unhealthy for a community. It feeds further arrogance. After our last meeting, the attorney backed up Ms. Reynolds' rules violation of October 9th. Let's reverse the scenario and pretend that I'm up here signaling a person out by name, saying that I saw him act rude, rudely to someone at a store. I mean, the chair would bang his silly hammer. To have said our board members live by stricter rules than us was an outright lie. The latest example of this board governing by who's who. Anyone else wishing to address the commission? Um, Margaret Brum, 404 East Magnetic Street. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the uh, mayor and the members of the commission for appointing me to the Local Development Finance Authority Board. I will do my best for the city. Um, this is kind of unique, but I've noticed dur during the presentations in the past that I often have questions for the speaker and there's no um, time given for the audience to ask the speaker questions, so I consulted with the city clerk. She suggested I put the questions on the record now in the hopes that the speaker would answer them or that I request time to comment when the speaker's commenting, and you've never done that before, so I, I guess what I'm gonna do now is just rattle off my questions and hope that the speaker for the Presque Isle Park Advisory Committee will address them. Um, and I apologize for looking at my phone, but I, I wrote this up in an email and then I couldn't reach him by email. Um, the questions for Presque Isle, based on uh, some of the conversation I heard at the master plan uh, work session, uh, I actually heard people say out loud, seriously, that um, it should be under consideration that the island um, be um, charging a fee for vehicles to go around. Um, there's also the consideration that uh, no vehicles would go around, instead a tram would be provided for people to ride around the island. 
Uh, there was also uh, the suggestion that the Moosewood area be converted into a, um, and I'm, I may be remembering this wrong, but I think I heard the word gigantic visitor center uh, with, with a compelling introductory point to the, to the island. And also that the island uh, be converted over the next five to ten years from a pedestrian road to, uh, not, excuse me, a vehicle road to entirely a pedestrian road. And again, these were comments made by people during a long discussion. No decisions were made. It was just brought up. And I'm hoping that the speaker will address some of these things. Um, I grew up in Marquette, and riding around the island was one of the best uh, things you could do. And I was away from town for a long time, and I lived in Cincinnati for 11 months, and uh, many difficult days there, all of which I thought could be better if I was home and I could ride around the island. So I'm speaking from that perspective. I'm also speaking that when this comes up during a master plan discussion, I have to think that there's other people thinking this way. So I'm hoping that the person speaking on the Presque Isle Committee can address some of these uh, uh, suggestions, ideas, and concerns. Uh, obviously, uh, for the record, I'm not in favor of banning ve vehicular traffic. I'm not in favor of charging a fee. I'm not in favor of a, of a tram. And I'm also not in favor of a visitor center at the island. Um, I can go into record for what I feel about that. But I appreciate if the, the speaker could address some of these uh, and see how real they are. Thank you very much. Anyone else to address the commission? Any, hearing none, seeing none, public comment is closed. <laughs> that brings us to presentations. The first one will be by uh, the chair of the committee, Sam Crowley, and it will be the Presque Isle Advisory Committee. Sam, the floor is yours. Um, so yes, so thank you. My name's Sam Crowley. I'm the chair for the Presque Isle Park Advisory Committee. Uh, the committee would like to extend its appreciation for hearing this presentation, taking the time for you to hear this presentation tonight. Uh, let me get things rolling here. Oops. So we'll pop into that first slide. So this is the roster on the committee. We have a full roster, and then we have managed to have uh, 11 meetings, so a full quorum at all the scheduled meetings. Uh, we are an advisory committee, and so we advise you, the city commission, on Presque Isle Park and the accomplishments. And so there's a lot here, and there's certain areas that the committee asked me to make sure to cover with you. Uh, a big thing that's happened in the last three to four years is the increase in use at the park. Uh, so Marquette tourism has increased. Presque Isle Park has been a centerpiece of a lot of that tourism, in particular Black Rocks. And so we're seeing increased use out there. And so number one, one of the, uh, a big piece that happened there was the mitigation of the pedestrian erosion by Black Rocks. So this, about three years ago, started, we identified this, went through several plans, issues as far as staffing, weather, funding, things like that. This, this spring, we were finally able to address that. And so you might notice a different way, for example, of getting from the parking lot to Black Rocks. And so we, we're addressing that area on the slope that's uh, eroded. Uh, number two is something that's very exciting. So Northern Michigan University has an outdoor recreation program, four-year degree, and their seniors do a class project. And a group of them for the last two years, I believe, possibly three, have taken a, what's called a Leave No Trace program. And they presented this at Presque Isle to the public. Leave No Trace is a national standard. This is if you go to the national parks, you go to public lands, they recommend this is how you treat the land. And so how you, how you find things, how you approach it, and then how you leave it. And so it's very exciting, and we're looking to continue with that as well. Um, and then number three, getting back to the heavy use of the park. So one of the things that has happened, at, in particular at Black Rocks, is the parking lot there has, has overflowed, and so the parking, people are now parking out onto the road, uh, the sides of the road. So there is congestion, 
and in, t in, ca in some cases, the road is uh, blocked, so cars are not able to uh, be able to go around. And in other cases, there's not enough room for a large vehicle. Think of an ambulance, fire, uh, fire engine, et cetera, to be able to get past the parked cars. And so the, uh, that's been a, uh, we've discussed this for a while, and the city police requested the installation of no parking signs by the area. And so by the, having the park, no parking signs there, they're able to write tickets. And then that did help with the congestion by Black Rocks. Uh, so that, that was a trial installation this summer. And then number four, uh, the monthly review of incidents that uh, have happened. So we have asked the city liaison about incidents that have appeared in the paper and the city liaison was unaware of it. Um, we're also, there, there was some other incidents that happened that again, there wasn't awareness of it. So what is happening now is the city liaison is asking the police department, fire department, department of public works for any incidents that happened in the prior month and then bringing that to us. And so this way we know if there are tickets being written there or if the police are addressing certain issues, then we can t take a look at the policy uh, and such and address that via there, uh, that way. Uh, and then Dark Sky, we'll, we'll have a whole slide on the Dark Sky trial. And then uh, with the next item, so we have six through 12, um, a lot of important things here, but just for the sake of time, we'll just uh, pass through these. But some very important items there. Uh, goals for the upcoming year. Um, and so the first two address that congestion that we're seeing at the park. And um, so the number one, this, this may be what the uh, 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 Ms. Brum uh, might have heard discussion of, and that is taking a look at the walking and driving hours out at the park. Um, so one of the things is, is the parking signs was the first vote. I, I've been on the committee for six years, and it's the first vote I've seen that split the opinion of the committee. It was the first non-unanimous opinion. And so if you go back to, and if you go back to when Peter White first attained that, uh, that land for the city, he brought in Frederick Olmsted. Frederick Olmsted is the designer of Central Park in New York City, designed parks around the US and Europe. And so when he came and saw uh, Presque Isle, he said the best thing you can do is nothing, is leave it the way it is. And so the folks, the, the, there, there is a minority, but a significant minority on the committee who feel that having signs on the north side of the park, so once you get on the road and you're driving, they feel that that takes away from the wilderness feel, that that um, affects the park. And so the committee, that's why it was a trial, was to see how it worked, see how it looked. And so the committee has been continually discussing this. And so one of the ideas that the committee has unanimously moved towards is looking at the walking and driving hours, not eliminating the driving hours, but adjusting the walking and driving hours so that that parking congestion, so that we, we do have parking available out at the park, um, it is by the break wall, it's by the pavilion, it's by Moosewood, there's plenty of parking there, and that what we would do is adjust the hours possibly so that people would walk or bike to Black Rocks during the high congested hours, and then still have the, par have the road open at other hours so that people would be able to drive for, for, what are, you know, for that enjoyable drive or if that's, that's how they are able to access the park. Um, and so let's see, that's the first two. And then number three, the land use policies. So about as the increase in the use of the park happened, um, what was happening was we were finding that both the committee and it, it appeared the uh, city administration as well was more reacting to things happening at the park versus having a policy towards things happening at the park. Uh, an example of that would be the hammock issue that happened out at the park. So hammocks became very popular. People were buying them, putting them up between two trees, and then using them out at the park. 
Uh, the problem with that is it does damage the trees and it can potentially kill them. Um, and then it's also against city law. So there's a law against hanging anything on the trees on city property. And so it took us a while to sort that out, figure that out. This land use policy would have that in writing, would have other policies in there, and then that would help us be able to anticipate problems versus reacting to them. And so this is something that once the Parks and Rec Master Plan goes forward, and then we can sync this land use policy with that, that would be coming to the city, to, to you, to the city commission for your approval. Um, another item is the forest management. Um, it is believed that the 1980s was the last forest management study done at Presque Isle. And so we would like to have a, a study done to update, obviously update things, but there's a concern about fire risk out at the park. So if you go out to the park, you'll find a lot of dead and down wood, and that's a good thing, that's habitat, um, but then the problem is, is that's also fuel for a fire. And so a fire at Presque Isle would be devastating, um, and it would impact the community as far as going, you know, impacting the park and the park's use uh, in the community. And so having this study would be the first steps towards making sure we have a healthy ecosystem out there and that we're managing it in the best way. Um, and then uh, one other thing here is that we're developing a standard rule sign. So instead of having a, a sign for each rule, um, we would have one sign, icons, so things such as no hammocking, no camping, no fires, et cetera, can be put on one sign, and the other signs can be removed and just have this one standard sign out there. And then you can see that we would continue with a lot of the other uh, items that we have as well. We have a concern with erosion. So about three years ago, the lake came up to near record levels and is still there. And so in the fall, when the storms kick in, that erodes some of the shoreline, especially, especially along the western uh, edge of the park. And so we, city staff is keeping an eye on that, has measurements, et cetera, uh, does measurements annually to make sure that we're aware of the erosion and what is currently happening with that. Um, so dark sky, and so dark sky, to review what that is, dark sky is a, uh, a, it was brought to us to the committee by the Marquette Astronomical Society, and this is uh, a national uh, movement essentially where in places where there is minimal light pollution, to have what's called this dark sky park where people can come, observe the sky, and be able to uh, s see the various events. And the society came to us, uh, proposed that. It turns out there's one other uh, dark sky park in Michigan that's downstate. And most dark sky parks run from sun sunset to sunrise. And so bringing that into the city, um, it created some challenges as far as that our parks close at 11 o'clock. And so the society and the city administration worked together and developed a trial period. And you can see that that trial period runs Friday and Saturday, or Fridays and Saturdays, June 1st through October 31st. And the park hours are extended until 1 a.m. A concern that the city staff had has and had is the safety of people and the potential for vandalism. And you can see that there was uh, three people that uh, the police department reported three people parked or three incidents of people parked in or locked in the uh, park after hours. And then the concerning one is reported from the DPW, the Department of Public Works. The individuals, uh, apparently somebody pulled posts out at the park. Um, and so we're really concerned about that. We didn't hear about it. Um, and so that was what prompted us to ask the city liaison to pull the departments so that we would hear more about that. Um, the one piece is, is that the committee is in full support of Dark Sky. We support the city staff. We support the Marquette Astronomical Society. And we support that collaboration in going forward in having future events out at the park. 
And so at this point, is there any questions? Commissioners, any questions? Commissioner Frazier. Good job, Sam. I remember my Pat Pack days with you. So it's a great committee, and I, I love the island because it relates back to my great grandfather, Peter White. And I agree with you on the, I mean, the lake's not going down anytime soon. I just, I see it ra raising and going up and down at the, my dad's boathouse, and I don't see it because I think erosion's going to continue to go up, unfortunately. And the city would look good. The only thing I was, I was going to say is I agree with you with your board about the signs. I mean, even if there's a sign there, people are going to figure a way to park there. I mean, they're going to, if there's a sign there, they'll pull five feet ahead in front of it and say they're going to park there. So I've suggested to the city manager before, I think your board said it before, like putting big rocks there. I mean, when we redo the island, the road to the island, if those rocks are, you know, right there with a little break wall, plenty of rocks. So I agree with, I agree with this, your board, you know, instead of putting signs up, put like a rock every big rock, maybe like, like five, ten feet or something like that to prevent people from parking there. Because that way you don't have signs up there. It looks more natural, like you said, and make your board happy and prevent people from parking there because then if there's a – they can't s squeak around rocks. <laughs> I mean, very good. Your board, your board does great, and you guys tell a lot on your plate. It's a busy island, a lot of stuff going on, and moose was really great. I remember the days when moose was involved. It's always – everything's going good on the island. And unfortunately, we have a little bit of erosion to deal with, but hopefully you guys will keep an eye on that. Thank you, Commissioner. Anyone else? Commissioner, uh, uh, Commissioner Reynolds, please. Um, a comment and then a question. I, I like that you are looking into the forest management and the fire risk. I think that that's important in the future. Um, so just that I support that notion. Um, I don't know if you would know the answer to this or this would be someone else, but I'm curious of what kind, how many people were getting at like those dark sky events just out of curiosity if is it like five people that show up to a friday night or is it 20 or um we we didn't get a report on numbers okay. this year but in the first year we were hearing there was about between one to three dozen depending on the evening okay that's so. sounds good to me anyone else commissioner smith i just want to say thank you sam for serving on the high pack board and for coming here and giving a presentation tonight i think i'm glad that we've got a committee designated just for Presque Isle because it's an important park. It's a really big part of our city and our park state department. Um, I, I like some of the comments you had about the fire risk, not something I considered. So again, I'm glad there's a special committee de designated to this cause. Thanks for what you do. Thank you. Commissioner Hill. Uh, when does the committee meet? Um, we meet uh, the second Wednesday at 5.30 at Lakeview Arena at the Citizens Forum. And I raise that issue to let folks know that that's a really important way to get involved is to come to those meetings. Uh, I'm really glad that everyone's here for the city commission meetings, but a lot of the, as you've heard, a tremendous amount of work happens at those monthly commission meetings. And even if you're not a member, although we, as we said, we'd love to have more people on our committees, um, attending as a, as, a, uh, as a resident or interested citizen is really, really important and a chance to speak. There's public comment period during those meetings, just like there is during our meetings. So thank you, and yeah, thanks for the really good work. Um, the problem of being loved to death is a problem that a lot of parks have, and it's a really challenging question, and I really, you folks have taken on a, a big, a, t a difficult challenge, and really appreciate that. Um, is there, and then I, last question, um, is there a uh, timing on the forest management study or is that is proposed and not yet official yet? Um, I believe, um, I know John Swenson could address that directly. So. Yeah, we've actually entered into a contract with Caretaker Forestry and uh, they are uh, working on uh, gathering the data toward that plan as we speak. Maybe not as we speak, but during yeah. the daylight hours. It's dark, yeah. And maybe <laughs> with a warmer daylight hours. <laughs> with um, any sense of when the report would come? Yeah, I think they're, they're looking to have it wrapped up uh, within the year, so. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Campana. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Sam, uh, thank you tonight for the presentation. We appreciate that. In regards to Black Rocks, <coughs> uh, in the near past, yeah, there's been some serious erosion there. Mm -hmm. And the city, on your recommendation, has uh, taken steps to uh, stop that 
or direct traffic away from the easy way up. Uh, and it seems to be working. I guess my question, is it working? And do you have further plans to continue to, uh, you know, uh, stop people taking the shortcut up and making them go around as they should? Yes. Yes. So the, the plan, the mitigation plan was to, or is, um, it is up, is that there, there is a wood railing that's installed. And so people can step over that if they choose. But then the other thing that's happened is on that path, we've put uh, branches and such. So it looks, instead of an inviting path, it looks like a way that you don't want to go. And then we have signs directing people around to a more sustainable path, uh, a, a path that has less vegetation on it, more rock. And that seems to work, does uh, it? Yes, yes, okay, it, good. it appears to be. So, so thank you. But, but we'll be keeping an eye on that yeah. because that, that erosion, it, it increased as the years went by, um, that erosion, it was surprising to see how that would increase from season to season. Oh, it was serious. It was yes. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioners, any other comments? Mr. Schlegel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> um, thank you, Sam. Uh, love the committee. Spent six years there in the early 2000s, at which point uh, we instituted the first phase of the erosion control uh, yes. program that uh, was caused by the lake. I know that there's some other great um, information still in that that uh, that humongous binder that uh, has second, third, I think, and even fourth phase um, options to be um, considered should that be uh, necessary. It's a great study. Um, I think Tri Media did it and found I was really impressed with that. Um, I'd like to kind of go back and, and just really quickly address some of the questions that Ms. Brum might have had, because uh, I think most of those comments were my big mouth opening up and, and throwing ideas out at a a session which is called a work session for those reasons of throwing ideas out and, and kind of opening up uh, opportunities or something to plan for for the future. Um, so uh, the reason I suggested something as, as uh, uh, kind of outlandish, maybe it's just some as a tram or a, a trolley that might go around, would be to stop people in those parking lots, allow them to board that, take that to Black Rocks, eliminate those extra tires on the uh, on the on the circle drive um, <coughs> give, give us some mobility out there without having to uh, you know keep people from from being tempted to park uh, give them that uh, that opportunity uh, you can have a number of spots around that uh, two mile loop that would allow people to hike uh, swim do a multitude of things that uh, could save a lot of tire traffic out there um, the so-called gigantic um, universal welcome center uh, was more in relation to uh, an idea of aging structures out on the island. We've got a, a bathroom that's almost ready to, to be uh, shut down. We've got a, uh, a beautiful um, uh, band shell that is uh, in dire need of, of repair and almost in disrepair. We need to bring all these up to ADA compliance. We've got a Moosewood Center that has a, a, s a very sweet spot in the, in the community and serves an amazing, uh, as an amazing resource to the nature and everything that's involved in our community. And if we decide, and that building is, is on its last leg as well. So basically what my point was, is not to make it gigantic, but to make it as all encompassing, put the concessions in there, put the bathrooms in there, make things um, ADA compliant from uh, use as a welcome center to use as a uh, as pr proposed or possible outside amphitheater type uh, venue. I don't know if it's possible, but if we don't start thinking about that for the future, then what are we doing for ourselves? So those are the things that uh, I hope I'm answering some questions there, and I'd be happy to talk about it further afterwards if, if you'd like to. Um, the, the, the fee that was uh, so-called brought up to or, or proposed to be charged could be something as simple as a, a, a yearly sticker for a dollar that would allow our, our local residents to get in or, or do something to raise funds for maintenance for different things. I don't want to spend another, I, I, I'd, I'd spend a hundred dollars there. Uh, I love it that much, but um, I don't expect people to pay for something that was designated uh, the, the way that it was and, and it's there for us as our crown jewel. I love the place. Um, and uh, also there's, there is a, um, or was uh, at the time in the early 2000s, a handicap accessible pathway that went from the, the pavilion around to the gazebo. We couldn't get a switch back up the hill there um, to go from the top of the hill, but from the top of the hill, 
it started again and went around to Lookout uh, Point there uh, at the top of the hill. Um, a lot of that was done through the city workers, um, uh, the union members that designated or, or, or donated their time um, to help construct that pathway with the, the granite that was being recycled from the airport. We also used a number of uh, uh, volunteer hours from the Pipe Pack Committee and uh, the Union Chamber of Commerce that was in place at the time. All great things. The pack path itself could use some updating, but it certainly is one of those steps that, that goes back and says Marquette was and, and should be and always will be um, keeping in mind our, 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 our people that may have special needs um, for accessibility, what have you. So just great things. Um, I hope I cleared up some of those questions for you. I'd be happy to talk about it at, at uh, any time. And uh, as far as where my mouth gets me sometimes, but please uh, don't uh, read into it too much. Thank you. Thank you. Any other commissioners? Well, let me just wrap up by, uh, by thanking you, Mr. Crowley, for the, the great work and the, well, the great presentation, the tremendous work the committee does. Uh, obviously, you are, you are <laughs> very highly thought of by this commission and I think by all of our citizens. On, on a little different note, uh, this briefing and some of the comments prior to the briefing well illustrate the difference between a city, a, a city commission work session when many ideas are thrown around, many ideas are uh, talked about, you blue sky a little bit, you think about some stuff and then you move on, you do something else. You're not making decisions on a, on a work session. You're not making recommendations on a work session. You're having a free flow of information. And people have to realize that they don't react to that. Because somebody said something doesn't mean the world's going to end or we're going to start suddenly charging people money to go around Presque Isle or whatever. The Presque Isle Advisory Committee would be the start point for many of those ideas if they ever would come this way. But the commission certainly has the responsibility to look at things in a, in a wider breach sometimes and just discuss them and see if they have, have a relative merit as we may see them. But again, Mr. Crowley, thank you very much for a great program and a, and a, and a great deal of information you've given us. Well, thank you. Uh, next presentation is by Mr. Steve Laurie, and that is the Board of Review. Good evening, Honorable Mayor and Commissioners. Um, as the Mayor mentioned, I'm Steve Laurie, most of you know me. Um, 1813 Woodland Avenue here tonight representing the Board of Review uh, with the annual report. And um, our current roster shows uh, that we have four of the five positions filled right now, but if you'll take a look at the dates, the expiration dates of those terms, you'll see the chair, David Brooks, uh, is finished this week and is term limited out. And Mr. Wilson uh, is also, uh, term, er, his term expires this week and he has elected not to be reappointed. So we desperately need people on the Board of Review. Um, I've been trying to recruit as has Mrs. McDonald. Um, we've so far not been very successful in, in finding anybody else to sign up. Maybe our subject matter is not quite as interesting as that of the Parks and Rec or some of the other boards, but I do feel we serve a very important function, uh, somewhat different than at an advisory board. We actually process some of the, uh, act as a hearing board in, in place of the city commission uh, for the public to bring their uh, grievances to with regard to their taxation evaluations. Um, the, the board is uh, established by city charter, but that uh, really just kind of mirrors the state statute that requires municipal governments to have such a board to uh, provide a, a, an outlet for uh, property owners who feel aggrieved by their uh, taxation assessments or property tax assessments to uh, take those to be heard by someone other than the assessor themselves um, by uh, public representatives. And we do get a fair number of, of uh, presentations during the year from, from the public, but 
it's a very manageable uh, effort. I think the uh, the assessing staff, which supports the border review, does an amazing job in this community because uh, most people are very satisfied with their uh, assessments, or at least uh, not dissatisfied enough to bother showing up or filing a petition. Um, and many of those who do actually uh, do see some relief, but um, it is uh, an opportunity that's available for all. The other thing is uh, serving on the Board of Review, it's not a huge uh, workload. We don't meet all that often. There's only five meetings scheduled per year. Um, and those are kind of spread out throughout the year. Um, there's four dates listed at the bottom here of meeting dates for this coming year. Um, we all actually have a uh, meeting also on March 5th that is just an organizational meeting to establish um, procedure, orient new members, and elect a chair and a, a secretary. Um, so the, the meetings are uh, pretty much set by the state statute as far as the timing during the year. Um, the March meetings, uh, there's both daytime and evening times uh, made available to the public to present their grievances. And uh, this chart and the next chart basically show the types of uh, appeals that we deal with and the structure, both local government and state government uh, portions of it that set the rules and allow for uh, appeals of tax um, assessments. Uh, primarily what we hear are uh, residential appeals regarding the valuations and um, requests from disabled veterans for exemption under the fairly recent state law uh, for property taxes on their primary residence. And we also have a few uh, poverty appeals um, for those who feel they cannot, as a household, uh, pay their full property taxes. Um, the law does provide for others to uh, bypass the commercial and uh, industrial um, classes, can bypass the border review and go directly to the uh, state tax tribunal, which is the way most of the dark store uh, appeals are, are doing. We haven't had to deal with one locally on the board of review, so that's uh, been somewhat of a um, relief as well. But uh, um, you can see the other types of appeals that uh, are available. One other thing is a principal residence exemption. Um, that's the, the uh, exemption that allows uh, property owners to um, avoid paying the school tax on or their property taxes to, to support the school tax on, uh, on their principal residence. Um, they still have to pay the, the municipal and county um, um, taxes on it. But it does require a, some initiative on their part to file the exemption request and some people forget to do that. They come along a year or two later and say, okay, I, you know, I overlooked it, I need to, to file it. That's when we go back and find out if they're deserving of it and they've, whether they've met all the standards and we can go back and provide some relief from previous years as well. Um, if you're uh, claiming it uh, unjustifiably, there are re periodic reviews by the assessor and by um, the state and county audits to review these uh, and make sure people are not claiming them on more than one property. So um, they are occasionally revoked and there are appeal processes to uh, protest that if it's revoked, but they don't involve the uh, Board of Appeals. They, those go to the, uh, the state levels. Um, you can see we, we deal with two basic uh, values on the property, the taxable value and the assessed value. <clears throat> the taxable value is what you pay taxes on based on 
um, proposal A that had the amendment limiting how much your taxes can actually increase from year to year. The assessed value is half of what the property is really uh, considered uh, saleable for, market value. So the taxable value is generally a little less uh, unless the property has just sold in that year and, and been readjusted to, uh, to match taxable and assessed. Um, but taxable value at 768 million and assessed value of about 903 million in the city. Uh, you can see that most of it is residential, uh, still about a, a quarter of it, a little over a quarter as commercial, and then some smaller groupings for uh, personal property and for industrial property. I think one of the, uh, the things that this these two pie charts point out is that uh, <coughs> even though the city still needs to be concerned about closure of the Presque Isle power plant, it's no longer providing uh, about approximately 50% of the value in the city uh, like it did at one time. It's uh, somewhat outmoded already and has uh, filed uh, ta tax appeals in the past that have been uh, led to its reassessment and, and it's been valued down. So you can see uh, industrial properties, which is mostly that parcel, uh, are down to 8% of the taxable value or assessed value in the city. And then they also have a, a portion of that uh, utility personal property that's another 1%. So it's still something to worry about and to plan for and to uh, adjust to, but it's not the impact that it would have had maybe 15, 20, 25 years ago. Um, the number of parcels in the city, 8,776 8, actual tax parcels in the city. Again, most of them residential um, and about 15% commercial uh, with personal property, but only 6% of the commercial properties are actually owned by the businesses themselves. So, um, that, I guess, compares with 361 exempt parcels in the city that are owned by local government, by religious uh, and nonprofit, uh, and also by disabled veterans at this point. The disabled veterans, uh, under the provision of, of that uh, state law, do have to reapply each year. So we do have a number of their appeals that we process and that will continue to be probably a major portion of the workload unless that law changes. Uh, I don't know if, how well that portion of the public is aware of the fact that they must annually refile for that with uh, the appropriate certifications, but uh, once they meet all of the certifications, it's really kind of a, a foregone conclusion that they get the exemption. They, provide all the appropriate paperwork. We don't really have the right to deny it, but we do have to vote on it. Um, this shows a little bit of history of the uh, number of petitions that were filed. And so you can see out of the more than 8,000 uh, parcels, we've dealt with 157 last year. And again, probably the majority of those were um, appeals on um, either personal residence exemptions or on veterans exemptions. We sort of serve as the, uh, the balance between the assessor and the taxpayer. Um, like I said it is a, an a appeals board where uh, the taxpayer, if they feel aggrieved by the notice they get from the assessor, um, we're the party they go to to, uh, to appeal that. And we do decide uh, that in some cases they have more information about the property value than the assessor had. A lot of the assessor's values have to be made on assumptions on the property because they either don't get the information from the property owner or don't get access to it. And so things, uh, and things are, are sometimes uh, extended out for a number of years. The assessing the uh, staff goes out and resurveys a, a small portion of the city each year to update assessments, but 
they don't do the entire city every year. Much of it is done just in the office with a, a factoring uh, change in value. So uh, to keep things as accurate as possible, um, they do go out and do a sampling, but it, it can lead to some inequities and we have the opportunity to adjust those. Um, again, uh, meetings may be few in number. Workload can be heavy. It hasn't been particularly heavy in the two years that I've been on this board. Um, I think it's been quite a number of years since uh, since it actually was really heavy in the city of Marquette. Um, so it's it certainly won't overwork anybody that wants to volunteer for the, this board, uh, and we could definitely use the people uh, quickly because the uh, the main <coughs> hearings come up in early March and they would have to be appointed uh, during the month of February. So, Do you have uh, any questions that I can try to answer? Commissioners, any questions? Commissioner Frazier. Yeah, it's not a board I would think of guys pounding on there to really get on. I mean, it's like you said, it's, a, it's an important board, but the planning commission, there's a lot of important boards to the city. All the boards are important, but it's not one I think of like, oh, go join the city board. It'd be great for you. And, you know, it just wouldn't be any fun. I know I thought about going there looking for reducing my taxes. And I talked to city managers. We'll go talk to Gary or money manager. Then I come out with nothing, <laughs> you know. But they always, Gary says, well, look at the power. What do you mean, the next power plant or what? You know, and so I said, okay. And I just laugh. And so, yes, you're a great board. You guys do a lot of work. And I, I talked to four mayors that do a lot of work with you. And guys all do your stuff and it would be a fun board to be on I mean we get to do our thing up here but here's the people okay here's the drawing here's the drawing here's the drawing you get people complaining the whole the whole hour so I imagine fun board <laughs> you know well it's not all complaints we do get basically the, the opportunity to hear the information they want presented and made made public and uh, so that I guess a, a better evaluation can be made of the property and I said the, the the subject matter may not be as as quite as interesting as some of the others, but it is a very rewarding uh, board to be able to serve on, and feel that you're meeting uh, a need of the public that they don't have anywhere else to go to. They they can't really bring those type of things to the city commission. Commissioner Smith. Thank you, Steve. I just wanted to say thank you for serving on the committee. It sounds like we need to do a little bit of recruiting on our part on the City Commission to try to get some more board members for you. Um, I know we appreciate what you do very much, and the, the folks that do come to you and have concerns appreciate you too. It's one of those things you don't really know about it until you need it. So um, thank you for doing what you do, and keep on, keep on doing what you do. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner uh, Campana. Thank you, Your Honor. Steve, if someone comes to you with an appeal, you make a decision and they don't like it, can they appeal further? Yes, the they Michigan can. They to can, they can oh. go to, uh, in some cases, it goes uh, to the state tax tribunal uh, through a, a, it's a type of, of uh, complaint that they have. And I guess the, the charts that I had up here, I guess, reflected that. But they do have one additional or, or in some cases two additional levels of appeal but they are at the state level some of that involves a a, a, a judge from the tax tribunal coming and holding local hearings it isn't that they have to go before the entire tribunal in Lansing to be heard uh, there are local hearings held uh, um, for those and these are homeowners that can do this yes they can last question how often does this happen here in Marquette uh, I think there's, uh, I, I guess the, the city manager could get you more well, specific statistics from the assessor, but I think it's less than a half a dozen per year. Okay. So they're pretty happy with the board of review. I believe so, yes. Good. Well, that's the way we want it. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, uh, Commissioner Schlegel. Thank you, uh, Your Honor. Um, Steve, I'm not sure if, uh, if this is the right question at the right time, but I'm going to throw it out there. I've had, uh, in, in other communities, I've had people talk to me about property values because of uh, work that was going to be done. And they said that when they had their local uh, uh, entities come around to evaluate their property, that the people were 
of, you know, how do I word this prep? They wanted to get inside the house and, and, and see what kind of improvements were done inside the house as well. Is there any value to that in this process or is it exterior property and, and structure only? To get the most accurate valuation, uh, they do need to get inside the house. They do provide a survey form uh, in advance of their visits for the property owner to fill out and update. If you've added a bathroom, if you've added uh, you know, a finished basement or something of that nature that wasn't on the records before, uh, that does increase the value of the home. If you add a fireplace or something, of, you know, new amenities to the house with improvements, um, those can be uh, increasing in the value of your home. And some of that is not really detected from the outside, from a walk around visit with, they basically show up to, to, to verify measurements of the exterior of the home and the property and, and that there are no additional outbuildings on the property. Um, but honesty on the survey form or allowing the, uh, the actual um, assessing staff to take a look inside and talk with you a little bit will result in a more uh, accurate assessment. Sure. If, it's, if it goes up, it goes up because you've added to the sure. and, and that makes a lot of sense. Thank you for clarifying. But it's, it's not based off of the gold leaf that I've got on my chandelier, which I do not. <laughs> <laughs> it's based off of bathrooms, um, living functional space, things along those that nature. Yeah, they're not going to go through each room in the house and take inside measurements. It's, it's the outside measurements that count. Sure. But uh, getting an idea of how much. And, and, I mean, in order to come up with the true value, they do have to make some assumptions. They make assumptions on whether you have a garbage disposal, somewhat based on the age of the house, on whether you have uh, um, maybe a spa tub or something of that nature. Some of that, if it's not reported in the initial building documents, um, some of it has to be assumed, and it's assumed based on the neighborhood you're in, the value of the house sold for previously, and uh, what you report. and. If you can clear up some assumptions, we do find that on occasion, people don't have all of the things in the home that uh, that were assumed to be there. Thanks, appreciate it. Thank you. Commissioners, any other questions? If not, uh, Mr. Lowry, thank you very much for the presentation and please pass on our best regards from the commission to the committee. Thank you. Commissioners, that brings us to item number seven, which is the public hearing on Ordinance 674 for Whetstone Village PLT. Uh, I will indicate that we do have someone from Whetstone here who can uh, answer any of the questions we may have as this com comes up. Mr. George Terwiller is in the back of the room, and if we have questions, we can certainly direct them to him. Uh, City Clerk. Thank you, Mayor Brackeron. On April 26, 1976, Ordinance Number 299 was adopted for the establishment of a payment in lieu of taxes built on the property of development, Whetstone Village Apartments, here in called development. The owners of the development are seeking financing with NISHTA for upcoming renovations to the property. As part of that financing, a new ordinance will need to be adopted that will coincide with the terms of the new financing. On October 9, 2018, the City Commission approved a letter of support as attached. It is now requested that the City Commission adopt an ordinance to comply with state statute. The currently enforceable ordinance, as well as subsequent proposed ordinance, is in compliance with state statute on taxing exemptions for housing development authorities. Act 346 of 1966, Section 125.1401, as amended. Fiscal effect, no change. The City will continue to receive 4% of current rents <coughs> that are received by the development over the duration of the ordinance. Recommendation, adopt ordinance number 674, an ordinance for the Whetstone Village tax exemption and authorize the mayor and clerk to sign. Alternatives as determined by the commission. I declare the public hearing open on ordinance 674 for the Whetstone Village PL or PILT. Does anyone wish to speak to this ordinance? Does anyone wish to speak to the ordinance? Hearing none and seeing none, I declare the public hearing closed. Commissioners, what is your pleasure? Commissioner Campana. I would move that we adopt Ordinance 674 
an ordinance for the Whetstone Village tax exemption and authorize the mayor and city clerk to sign. Mayor Pro Tem. Second. I have a motion and a second. No, I don't. Any com <laughs> yes, I do. Commissioners, any other comments? I'll get there. No. Okay. No, Co Commissioner Hill. And so I understand that the, it is the, uh, the Whetstone Village is partially in the city of Elkhart and partially in the township. And yes. So we're just, just for the parts that are in the, in the city. And, um, and then this is so that the apartments qualify for state funding. We're having to verify this, um, this amount. And I think it's very fair, a very fair amount, but that we're going through this to help them also receive additional financing. Any other comments, commissioners? I have a yeah, motion, I have a second. All those in favor, please signify by voting yes. Roll call. I'm sorry, this must be a roll call, correct. Count, uh, City Clerk, if you will conduct the roll call, please. Thank you, Mayor. Commissioner Quintana? Yes. Commissioner Frazier? Yep. Commissioner Hill? Yes. Commissioner Schlegel? Yes. Commissioner Smith? Yes. Air Force on Reynolds? Yes. Mayor Stonehouse? Yes. Item number eight. Thank you, Mayor Background. At its January 14th, 2019 meeting, the City Commission scheduled a public hearing to allow the community time to review the draft master plan and provide additional comments. The City Commission re reviewed the plan at a work session on January 16th, 2019. <coughs> Over the past month, the plan has been available on the City's website and in hard copy at the Lakeview Arena, Peter White Library, and City Hall. Fiscal effect, the Parks and Recreation Master Plan is a tool to help plan the course of the community services Parks and Recreation Division in terms of operation, budgeting, and capital projects. Recommendation, hold the public hearing. Alternatives as determined by the commission. the public hearing open. Mr. Verdo, you now may speak. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff Verdo. These are my opinions. As you've known since my early involvement, our natural areas and trails are the utmost importance to our residents and visitors from a recreational standpoint, as our latest survey attests. I periodically remind the commission of this for the members to pretend they didn't hear. 43% of us feel it's the most important, meaning the time has come for this board to wake up to our taxpayers and the tourist dollars that pour in. Despite a nice appearing report, there are a few areas of concern. First, two maps of Lighthouse Park are included, one with the trail shown east of the former Coast Guard headquarters and the other with the trail along the former railroad grade to the west. A trail would suffice at either location. Had our manager been aware of the imminent survey results, he'd likely have already run the trail, if only in gravel for the time being. We have an issue in the southeast corner of Tourist Park. Over the years, we've seen that park impacted by increased lighting nearby, a woods destroyed for the NMU Services Building, tree cutting east of Sugarloaf, and the Dead River Flood that would have washed away a new pavilion that I advised this board against building there. The map clearly shows Tourist Park southeast woods exploited for yurts. Tracts of mature forests, even of small acreage, are rare in our immediate area and serve as a buffer within <laughs> Tourist Park. When this came up several years ago, the board was offered an alternative to space the yurts to the north and east of the former ball field. The east edge faces woods that are every bit as thick as the southeast woods, but would not necessitate the destruction of a contiguous wooded area. We've lost so much across town already, there's no excuse to needlessly sacrifice more. South Beach keeps coming up, and the erosion at Pitnick Rocks, and the acre of former Coast Guard Beach, and the destruction of 251 acres to die for, for golf course expansion, and recent decisions to exploit Hartwood. 
even threats to the thin precious stand of trees at the former South Rail Yard, which is thankfully not recommended in this report. Walk through the woods at the southeast corner of Tourist Park to experience the grandeur of what nature provides us. It's a natural cathedral that would never be the same if dedicated to a single purpose that can be fulfilled as effectively by placing the yurts in currently open sections of the park. This board needs to institute provisions to fine tune large reports instead of proving all or none, usually to dispose of items quickly and to move on. Of concern are future planned areas for Hartwood some within better suited natural spaces and ones that would compromise our opportunity for forest corridors. Finally, in scanning the report, I found no mention of dune grass preservation in any of our lake parks, which if so, would be an oversight. Anyone else wishing to speak to this topic? Good evening, Mayor Stonehouse, Commissioners. My name is Deborah Jean. I live at 121 Old Saloon Trail in Marquette Township. Um, I am the president of the Rowing Club, and um, I would just like to thank all who had worked on the Parks and Recreation, excuse me, five-year master plan. It's very thoughtful and articulate. We're very pleased to see that the Rowing Club is included in that document moving forward. Um, I'm here tonight uh, regarding this, the paragraph on the rowing club on page 75, and I'm just following up with an email that I sent yesterday. Um, we're asking that you strike the sentence that reads, the city has supported this effort. However, at the time of this master planning process, it does not appear that the UPCRC will be following through with the boathouse facility. We feel the above does not accurately reflect our intention to find a solution for equipment storage and could potentially hinder future grant funding. Instead, we would like to suggest the following wording which more accurately reflects our intention. The city has supported this effort and at the time of the master planning process, the UPCRC is still interested in maintaining a presence on the lakefront and continues to search for equipment storage options. Thank you for your consideration and your time this evening. Thank you. Anyone wishing to speak? My name's Lenny Scheibel. I'm from 2722 Scenic Drive, apartment 309. Um, as I was looking through some of the report that was put out on the master plan, I noticed that the first guiding principle was to take care of what we have before allocating resources on new projects. Now, I would submit to you to consider that the project at Lambros Park is not completed yet. It's not that this would be a new project to get access to the water. I said that before. We need to change the language in the report from access to the beach to access to the water. And I would ask you to consider the fact that the Lambros project is not complete yet. Therefore, it could possibly fall under that jurisdiction as you're doing your deliberating. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Uh, Margaret Brum, 404 East Magnetic. As I stated in earlier remarks, which I sent to the clerk and every member of the commission, I'm in favor of the Parks and Recreation Master Plan. Of course, being a patent attorney, I think it should be three times as long and have 10 times more graphics. but. Uh, it has a tremendous amount of information and a great deal was considered. One of the realities I've recently encountered is um, the ability to reach the lake is something I've always taken for granted until I met Mrs. Scheibel and her husband. And together, a group of us, uh, based on a church, uh, ran a GoFundMe page to get her a beach wheelchair. And we ended up getting some bamboo mats. And with no permanent change to Lambros Park, we were able to get her from her car into the beach wheelchair into the water. And uh, you all had the link. I, I made sure I'll, I, I made John Swenson sit and watch the entire video that it actually happened because too often people come in front of you and say, this would be nice if it did happen. And I wanted you to be aware that it did happen. And I wanted you to know that my uh, church group is willing to sponsor another GoFundMe page to get uh, another beach wheelchair, maybe two, and donate them to the city with the proviso they have to be available to people at Lambros Park. And I realize this is something that the city has not yet embraced, 
And I use the word embrace because I think it is a change that is, is a long time coming, but we did show that it was possible. And we would like to encourage you as you go forward on this master plan that you, uh, Mr. Swenson was kind enough to walk me through the guiding principles and that the 10th one had to do with having uh, an overall architecture for the entire plan is that sometimes you look at a, a problem and you have like 31 parks and all of them have accessibility issues. And you think, well, that's too much to change for every park. And my, my idea is simple. You, you name Lambros Park the flagship park for accessibility. It has so much in its favor. And you work with that to make it be the accessible park. And you take the lessons learned from that and you move forward. And one of the things that I didn't put in the email, but I would like to encourage you to consider is to invite various groups among town to adopt these parks and become, uh, and for want of a better term, uh, guidance and people you go to, to maybe get a beach mat, maybe get a beach wheelchair, maybe get something that the park needs that isn't in the budget and that don't have a grant for. Because if there's one thing that the Parks and Recreation Master Plan shows is how much people love uh, the parks and the recreation, and we all love it for different reasons. So again, I wanted to make that, I made that offer in writing, I'm making it verbally, and I'm standing by it. Uh, that in the event that the city lets us know that they'll put those beach wheelchairs in operation, we'll get them for you. And I uh, thank you for your consideration for this. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else to address the ordinance or the hearing? Hearing and seeing none, I will close the hearing. That brings us down to the consent agenda. Mayor Pro Tem. I move that the consent agenda be approved. Do I have a second? Uh, Commissioner Frazier? Second. Now understand the vote on this will need to be a roll call vote That's because right. we do have several, uh, 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 what am I gonna call it here, resolutions within it that need to be taken care of. So I will call the vote then by roll and have the clerk conduct it. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Campana? Yes. Commissioner Fraser. Yes. Commissioner Hill? Yes. Commissioner Schlegel? Yes. Commissioner Smith? Mr. Mayor, do we have the opportunity to comment before the roll call vote? Okay. Yes. Yes. We're ahead of ourselves. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Should we start that part over? So how do I back my way out <laughs> of this attorney? <laughs> we get a motion and a second uh, comment. I have a motion and a second covered. There's a motion and a second. There hasn't been a vote taken yet, so comments okay. appropriate. Comments are appropriate. Please, Commissioner Smith. I just wanted to ask, we had a couple of emails um, yesterday, one of which was the rowing club, and then the other was, oh man, I lost my train of thought because I stopped the, the vote. What was the other email we received yesterday? Thank you, the tennis courts. Um, we want to make sure that those comments are taken in consideration before we vote on this um, master plan. Consent this, is, this is consent agenda. Oh, yeah. we're not voting? Okay, no. sorry. Parks and Recreation. Oh, we're all mixed up meeting. tonight. We are. No we're, comment we're, on the consent We're finding our way. <laughs> <laughs> we're finding our way, but we're doing it the right way. So, <laughs> clerk, if you can continue the roll call, please. No further comments on the consent <laughs> agenda. <laughs> no. Nope, another comment. Uh -oh. Commissioner. Uh -oh. Go for it. Yes, you may comment. On the consent no, agenda. agenda. We're still on consent agenda. No comment? Yes. <laughs> On consent agenda. <laughs> Not the Parks and Rec. I'll comment later. <laughs> <laughs> I will that change the roll, please. <laughs> we'll re let's restart. Sorry. Uh, Commissioner Campana. Yes. Commissioner Fraser. Yes. Commissioner Hill. Yes. Commissioner Schlegel. Yes. Commissioner Smith. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Reynolds. Yes. And Mayor Stonehouse. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Moving on to new business. We have the Parks and Recreation Master Plan, and this is the one that will require a, a roll call vote. That said. And a background. background. Say again. Background. 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 We will do the background. Thank you, Mayor. The Parks and Recreation Master Plan is the document that guides public policy, capital improvements, and the budget process with regards to park and recreation within the City of Marquette. 
This document also allows the city to apply for recreational grants through the Department of Natural Resources. At its January 14th, 2018 meeting, the City Commission scheduled a public hearing to allow the community time to review the draft master plan and provide any additional comments. The City Commission reviewed the plan at a work <coughs> session on January 16th, 2019. Over the past month, the plan has been available on the City's website and in hard copy at the Lakeview Arena, Peter White Library, and City Hall. To date, the Parks and Recreation Master Plan Ad Hoc Committee has had 10 regular meetings to discuss the plan. The Parks and Recreation Advisory Board has reviewed the plan at six meetings. The Harbor Advisory Committee, Presque Isle Park Advisory Committee, Arts and Culture Advisory Committee, and Public Art Commission have all provided input on various parts of the plan. In addition to these opportunities for public input, the City conducted two days of stakeholder meetings, one open house, and asked for public in input through a statistically valid valid citizen survey. Finally, a public hearing was held at this meeting and advertised for the last two weeks. Fiscal effect, no direct fiscal effect with this action. However, the Parks and Recreation Master Plan is a tool to help plan the course of the Community Services Parks and Recreation Division in terms of operations, budgeting, and capital projects while allowing the city to apply for grant funds to the DNR. Recommendation, approve the resolution adopting the attached five-year Parks and Recreation Master Plan as presented. Alternatives as determined by the Commission. Commissioners. Commissioner Reynolds. I move to suspend the rules for discussion. We have a second. Commissioner Campana. We I second that. Session, right? Okay. We need a vote. So um, all in favor of opening the item for discussion? <coughs> yes. 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 Any, uh, any opposed? Motion passes 7-0, item is open for discussion. Well, I just thought that that would be an easier way to get the couple things that we've gotten emails about, um, one being the tennis courts, next being the UPCRC, and last being um, to Mrs. Brum's point. And I think that those three points seem like they're poignant and need to be brought into this plan. I don't know how that would look with us currently voting on it this evening and if we could easily add a very few amount of sentences to make that more finite, John. So that's really what I'm looking from from you if you would need me to try to come up with that at this exact moment, how that looks. <laughs> yeah, so I think I can uh, sort of shed a little bit of light on um, maybe some of the changes that I've already documented that uh, that we could easily put into it tonight, um, vote on it, uh, you could vote on it with those changes, uh, and then the uh, consultants could have that uh, into the plan tomorrow. So um, <coughs> I guess first and foremost is one that nobody's heard yet, and that was a, a simple error that was found by the consultant yesterday. Um, and that was uh, page six, guiding principles, other places in the plan we've called that goals, so we're gonna be consistent with that. Uh, so that would be one change. Um, page 75 uh, has to do with the rowing club, and I think it would be appropriate um, to change that sentence to, um, to exactly as it uh, was stated. So um, it would basically delete the part that says that uh, UPCRC uh, will not be following through with the boathouse facility and then add on to that um, the UPCRC is still interested in uh, maintaining a presence on the waterfront and uh, seeking out storage opportunities. So th that uh, sentence that was requested is in the plan uh, so it would be a matter of deleting that one little part and I think we can easily do that um, which is exactly what was laid out. Um, the other two changes, or really three, surround the tennis courts. So um, page 104 uh, highlights two tennis courts at Sandy Knoll that are not, no longer there. So we could strike that part from the sentence. Um, page 104 also highlights eight tennis courts um, at Northern Michigan University. And as uh, stated in the email, those courts are not um, operational. We spoke with NMU today. And they don't have a plan at this point um, to have those back up and operational. <coughs> it, it is in their master plan to address that, but uh, th at this time they don't uh, they don't have it in their five-year plan. Um, so I think that would be appropriate to strike that, and that also changes the num um, number of tennis courts by other providers on page 138 uh, from eight to sixteen, or from sixteen to eight. So I think those those plans 
uh, or those changes would be appropriate. Um, I think that uh, we could easily uh, make those and vote on the on the plan with uh, those changes. In regards to accessibility, I guess maybe to back up, I'd say um, we do have uh, Mr. Pat Coleman here, uh, who works directly with uh, Mr. Dick Horton um, on this. If we have any questions um, with the citizens of, of Marquette, I guess I'd like to say thank you all to uh, everybody that kind of helped to make this plan come uh, to the point where we are now. There was a lot of good input, a lot of good effort. Um, and I guess um, it with regards to accessibility, um, everything that Ms. Brum brought up uh, can be accomplished with the plan as it states. Um, this plan does not need to specifically call out every project. Um, I guess I'd like to read the, the guiding principles, um, the goals of the plan, and then um, that's really what the DNR takes. If we, you know, accomplish everything in that section, if we call out all the different goals that we have uh, with this plan, um, with accessibility and universal design being one of those 10 key factors, uh, we, are, we are good to go with any project that might come out of the woodwork that we don't have listed in here that, that really meets one of those goals. And um, this idea of accessibility at Clark Lambros Park is, is we could definitely make that happen as written right now. Okay, so. I appreciate the answers, John. Any other comments? Commissioner Schlegel? Thank you, sir. Um, I think it's important to, uh, and John help me out here, but we, one of the reasons that, um, uh, one of the things that we're, we're looking at as far as this new five-year plan is that it may say five years on it, but there's no saying that you're not going to take a look at things that may come up, such as accessibility and whatnot, incorporate those in year one, two, or four, um, and, and do some updates. Is that correct? Yeah, certainly. Um, it's sort of a, a working plan, and we tried to make it just specific enough to, to handle some of the, the hot-button topics that have come out of this process, uh, but also general enough to allow for those types of things to be incorporated in that, uh, you know, who knows what will, will come out of the woodwork and who will come forward with, um, you know, a pot of money uh, in two years. As long as it fits the, the goals of the plan, we can we can make that happen. So right. Wouldn't that be nice? Pot of money. Ooh. Yeah, so if anybody's listening and they, they have a <laughs> pot of money they want to bring forward. <laughs> Just happen to come line up. Um, well, that's great because, uh, you know, it goes along the lines, I think, with the city's master plan as well. Um, the planning commission does a review on that as they see fit. Um, may not be annually, but I know that uh, they've already come through since it was readopted in 15, 15 to, uh, to make some uh, updates to that. And that's just keeping us uh, on, the, on the front line of what's going on. You know, we're not letting things fall behind. It's really important to, um, to have that, uh, that, that checks and balance, I think, that, that it's going to allow us to not have a 10-year gap or a six-year gap or anything like that that's going to put us behind and have to invest a ton of uh, resources to do an update like that. So it's awesome. Nice work. Commissioner Hill. Um, I want to ask the members of the committee, are, um, when, when does the committee meet? I also want to just keep raising that issue of when, when can you be there? When's the, when's, when, what, what second Thursday, first Wednesday, whatever day? Uh, Parks and Rec. Third Monday of the of the month at six o'clock. Citizens Forum Lake. You don't Arena. have to go anymore, Carrie, so you don't have to worry about it. He's already written it off. Yeah, third third Monday at six o'clock at uh, at the Citizens Forum at Citizen Forum in Lake <coughs> Arena. So again, great opportunity to get involved. Uh, third Monday. Thank you all so much. And I think uh, that the um, the other thing to highlight is the incredible this is the heart and soul of our community, the parks and rec and the art, the cultural pieces that are here, the recreation pieces that are here, it's a, um, that we can come together, have it all in one place, and have it grow and evolve over time, as Paul said, is really exciting, and thank you all very much. Anyone else? Commissioner Frazier. It's a great committee, and everybody busts their butt to get it done. We had somebody, there was somebody from everybody, I put two meetings myself, 
There's representing the person rec board, PIPAC. There's somebody for everybody on that board. And they all went to detail everything. Something was brought up. They all went to detail on everything. What they were involved with, they went to detail about it and just talked about good things. And I think what I mentioned was one of the board members of that board used to be a PIPAC member, me. And we came with the idea to do a handicap accessible playground back in the day for PIPAC. That was 10 years ago. We thought it'd be done by now, but Gary hasn't found that pot of money yet. But um, that's thing is, you know, we're making, he made the point of making sure it's in the plan to make barrier free for everything. For handicap, handicap is barrier free. You know, that's the general term for everything. And it, it's harder to do, but certain player areas are kind of hard. Prescal, you know, you can only do so much with, you know, because it's so rocky. And you know, ruin the pipe pack gets into, you ruin nature, stuff like that. But other parks, like I said, working on our parks, there's no, Okay, we have to get this done right away because, like, like Paul's mentioned, you just never know. If something comes up, if Gary finds that great pot of money, and we're gonna rebuild, put some new erosion control on Prescott, we'll do that. You know, if erosion, if some money comes up somewhere else for grants, we can use a little bit of money for some more park. We'll do that. You know, so everybody's looking forward to the parks. Bob Chapman was very much good putting handicap accessible and all the stuff. I know the playground now got moved from Prescott to Lower Harbor, but we made sure that when that happened, like my payback days, was to make sure the new playground at Prescott will be handicap accessible. Won't be as, as big as the plan we were going, we were going for. We're gonna put it in Moosewood's parking lot and kind of adapt it to Moosewood and kind of work with them. We're gonna work with them. They're gonna make all kinds of cool stuff with it, but you know, make it down to Lower Harbor, do something else with it, but everything's going for it, but just remember, barrier free for everybody. Any other commissioners? Mr. Smith. So I just wanted to say thank you to John and his team and to the ad hoc committee, to the Parks and Rec Planning Committee. Um, it's a great five year recreation master plan. I don't know if anyone in the audience has had a chance to see it, but the little thermometer wheels are really interesting to look at for the different parks. It's really visually impactful and I think it's a, a great road map. Um, a couple of comments that I had at the work session, I was able to talk with John Swenson offline and um, kind of get some of those things into the public input portion of the master plan. Some of the concerns I had brought up were um, a, a toddler park or a toddler designated area and it sounds like um, that's something that we're going to kind of add into the notes. Um, so I'm very pleased with it and I am looking forward to see what we do with it. Thanks. Other commissioners? Seeing none, let me make one comment. I'm sorry, Commissioner Reynolds. Oh, I was just gonna make the motion. <laughs> Hold on one, I don't want a motion. <laughs> I, I may be mayor, but I get to talk. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> my, my only topic would be that, you know, this document doesn't mean it will happen. It doesn't mean that anything in that document is gonna happen. What it means is that it can happen. And if the opportunities are there and the funding is there and the stars come across the right way, that it now is something that we theoretically can do with, with resources perhaps coming from the state. The state will not provide resources if it's not in the, in the five-year plan. So it becomes a critical document, but it's not an execute document. It's not a, a plan that we will do. It's no commitment made. It is a list of things that we want to do if the funding can be made and located and come available. So we just have to keep that in perspective. I think sometimes we tend to get focused on this as something that's going to happen, and we have to be part of that. And the reality is it's a much bigger document. Uh, that said, if I can have a motion for uh, approval, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Reynolds. I wasn't trying to rush you along. Um, I move, um, Ron, if you can make sure that I do this correctly with what I wanna say. Um, I move that we adopt a resolution adopting the attached five-year parks and recreation plan as the two changes that we've suggested to John. With the edits articulated with, with the two by edits. Mr. Swenson? Yes. Okay. Uh, second, uh, Commissioner Schlegel. I'll second. Any other commissioner with comments? Hearing none, all those uh, pl uh, in favor, please signify by saying yes. Roll call. Yeah. No, sorry, roll call, got me again, see? <laughs> We're gonna do it. Roll call, please, clerk. Thank you, Mayor. Commissioner Quintana. Yes. Commissioner Frazier? Yes. Commissioner Hill? Yes. Commissioner Schlegel? Yes. Commissioner Smith? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Reynolds? Yes. Mayor Stonehouse? Yes. I'm going to do this right sometimes. 
Item 11. Mrs. Uh, Clerk, if you will please uh, read the item. Thank you, sir. Background. As a possible funding source for future infrastructure improvements, the Director of Municipal Utilities is recommending the city submit a state revolving fund loan, SRF, and drinking water revolving fund, DWRF, project plan. The project plan is a first step in the SRF and DWRF loan process in securing financing. The scope of the SRF and DWRF project plan is based on the city's six-year capital improvement plan of infrastructure improvements projects and the recent five-year utility financial plan, which are related to maintain the, city, the city's water and sewer systems. No commitment is required by the city for the projects that are included in the project plan. Only projects approved by the city commission through the annual budget process will be submitted for SRF and DWRF financing. The benefits of the SRF and DWRF program include lower bond interest rate, a 20-year bond term instead of a 10-year bond term that the city currently utilizes. The 20-year bond term results in a lower annual debt service in principal and interest. By participating in the SRF and DWRF program, loan forgiveness may become available if grant programs are instituted for infrastructure improvements by the state and federal government. The Director of Municipal, Municipal Utilities is recommending Donahue and Associates, Inc., be awarded a contract to assist in the development of an SRF and DWRF project plan. The city staff has reviewed the attached proposal and recommends approval. It should be noted that Donahue and Associates, Inc. has successfully completed the last three SRF DWRF project plans for the city, along with administration of the recently completed SAW grant. Staff has been very pleased with the quality of work Donahue has provided. This will affect Funding for the SRF DWRF project plan will be split between the water, sewer, and wastewater funds on a percentage basis. Recommendation, enter into a professional services agreement with Donahue and Associates, Inc. for the preparation of a state revolving fund and drinking water revolving fund project plan at a cost not to exceed $26,780. Alternatives as determined by the commission. Commissioners, what is your pleasure? Commissioner Reynolds. I move that we enter into a professional services agreement with Donahue and Associates for the preparation of, of a state revolving fund and drinking water revolving fund project plan for costs not to exceed $26,780. Mr. Second, Commissioner Hill. I, I second that motion. Commissioner Reynolds, further comments? I do not have any further comment. Um, I think that this is important to do and um, staff has been um, happy with Donahue and Associates. Commissioner Hill. And I second those comments on that. This is the sort of uh, nuts and bolts work that allow us to be efficient with our funds, and I really appreciate the time of the staff to put this together. Any other commissioner? Any comments? Commissioner Campana. Uh, yes, I th Your Honor, thank you. I, this is an item I think we have to pass. Uh, I do have a question on the financing. I'm not a banker, but it says is instead of paying it off in 10 years, you're paying it off in 20. Um, I also thought, you know, if you pay it off sooner, you save money. There must be a reason for doing it the long way. It's like a mortgage. It's a loan, you know. If <laughs> is there a reason we're paying it off over a longer period of time? In this particular case, this is a program run by the state, so we don't have any choice to pick our own term. If it were up to me, we would do it over 10 years, but this is a state program that requires 20 years. The upside to this, it's a lot lower interest rate. Right now, the interest rate is 2%, which is close to about half of what we, if we were to do it on our own, we'd probably be closer to 4% on our own. So, and this will also help too in the, when we do water rate studies, <coughs> um, because the debt service will be spread out over 20 years instead of 10, that will provide some relief um, for the water rate and sewer rates as well. Any other commissioner? All those in favor, please signify this motion by saying yes. 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 Any opposed, please signify by saying no. Okay. Motion passes 7-0. That brings us to the second public comment period. Comments may not exceed three minutes per person. Please state your name and physical address when making public comments. Anyone wishing to address the commission?
Frank Jeff Verito, these are my opinions. January 7th, we held a work session on legal weed. The entire board, especially the women, seemed amenable to seizing the biggest economic opportunity Marquette has seen in decades. Even so, this board has stalled since. Having cried about money, we lose on non-taxable properties and will lose when that wretched power plant closes. Ms. Hill mentioned the 62% who voted to legalize more than the 56% statewide. It was such a clear vote. We're in a new realm, she said. Ms. Smith wants to see why we can do it, not why we can't. Ms. Reynolds said this is an opportunity to do something real cool, to be at the forefront instead of waiting for what others do. She acknowledged the 22 of us present on a snow day. Of 14 public comments, 10 spoke in favor, three were neutral, and one spoke against. We need to account for Mr. Campana's warning that if we make rules, the state could pass conflicting rules. Investments can be lost. Great advice, but not his suggestion to wait for the state, because they could take a whole year. The stipulation dictates that we must be ready by then. Mr. Stonehouse's idea is sounder that we, quote, do what we can do in the meantime so we'd be more ready, end quotes. Mr. Schlegel asked the planner to check other communities for best practices, which he can report to us when we hopefully add this item to our next agenda. The public desire is too strong for this board to ignore, especially when members themselves recognize this need. The programs are largely su successful in every legal state and Canada. Most of the groundwork is done for us, tried and proven for our digestion and quick implementation. Let's start with a crude location off the beaten path to be safe. Educate the public about marijuana, including the medical benefits and the lives it's improved by being used for pain management instead of alcohol and other hard drugs. Without weed, a friend of mine would be dead by now. Most everyone knows that by now it's non-addictive and it never in the history of mankind has marijuana led to anyone to use a hard drug. In fact, it's an herb, not a drug at all. Nicotine and alcohol are hard addictive drugs that are proven to kill. If our women members are as ready as they claim, they can motion to add this item to our next agenda. We need more local opinions and also to study the uh, successful programs in other legal states. The Denver police chief approves. An expert on CBC Canada said, nothing's happened. And the officer who pulled me over for a blown taillight had no problem either. This board has leapt at most every income generating opportunity we've seen, some to our detriment. This opportunity will generate major revenue and be amenable not only to the 62% who voted in favor, but the police who no longer need to arrest innocent people except those who drive while smoking. In the meantime, we're losing thousands of dollars per day. Anyone else wishing to address the commission? Anyone else? Seeing none, public comment is closed. Uh, comments from the Commission. I think we'll start with uh, Commissioner Smith. Sure. I really only have one. Um, I'm familiar with the Start the Cycle program, and I think that if you bring that to the city manager's office or after the meeting that we can try to get that on a future agenda as long as it's agreeable to city attorney and city staff, but it's, it sounds like it should be pretty easy. Oh, and I'm sorry, you're not able to comment at this time, but um, we'll, we'll go ahead and get that handled for you after the fact. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, not much else to say tonight. We had a lot of great things come down the, uh, the pipe. Um, the master plan has been, uh, you know, one of those projects that you knew it was going to take that long when you, when you opened up the, the first notebook on it. But um, it's been well, well done, and I applaud you guys, and, and especially with staff and, and the hard work that they put into that. Um, stay warm out there, kids. Um, just two comments this evening. One to the green burial. I do know that the city manager has been looking into that. It's something that I think all of us have an interest of learning more information about. Um, it's something I personally would have interest with. So um, to your question, I hope we can get something working with that. Um, and the other issue that me and Mr. Verto agree on is this marijuana subject. And I'm going to keep um, bringing it up and making sure that we're moving on this topic. Um, I do believe that we plan on meeting on this, and it'll be on our agenda sometime soon. Um, not to what I would like, but um, if the city manager could let me know when we'd be looking to see this on our agenda, I would appreciate it. Commissioner Campana. 
I'm just happy tonight to see the passage of the Parks and Rec um, uh, plan. It's uh, a lot of people put a lot of hard time, a lot of, lot of work into this, and um, it's going to give us a good blueprint going forward so that perhaps the city can get some, realize some grants out of this. So I'm just, again, happy to see it passed. Thank you. That's all. Mr. Frazier. Uh, good meeting, as usual. Um, I know Parks and Rec at Versailles, they they worked really hard on that. They were very involved. Having to, like, when they put the plan together, they said, okay, we want this picture, and this picture, this doesn't qualify. I think we, we wanted to talk about was, I know the committee talked about, was, you know, there's several parts of master plan, recreation, recreation is for everybody, enjoys recreation, but, you know, there's not really a city event at Lake Vera. I mean, Lake Vera just seems like to be the, the sword ride right now. It used to be a hole in the, ro hole in the ground to stick money into but it's gotten better and the city's worked really hard to get it back up to spec. But there's not really any city events there per se. Like there's no, you know, because the city has different events at different venues, but it's always brought on by another company, like the, the hockey teams or whatever wants to rent. For. So there's different events there, but they're not hosted by the city. So it's in the master plan, but it just for the people to realize it's more it's important to the city, but there's also stuff in there that they made sure to say there's certain things that are more for people that, you know, bring on the enjoyment to the place. You know, same with a lot of, like, the skiers, the bikers, they all enjoy the trails. The city don't do anything with them, but, you know, we, we maintain it, but that's about it. But they all work their butt off to maintain it. So everybody's appreciate what they do. It takes advantage of what they can do and do what they can. And... I mean, what else can I do? Um, we need to take care of our, our parks that we have right now. The, I say no future plans. I think that means we don't want any more parks. I don't think Gary's going to pop money. We're going to make a park out of somewhere. But um, we just want to take care of the parks we have. But Prescott needs work. Every park needs a little bit of work. So we're going to look at how we can fix everything. When it comes to marijuana, I mean, this is our, it's still a brand new law. It just came through from state they passed it and thus people vote yes to rec medical right you can still use it people that medically benefit that's great I had no problem with that but there's nothing we we hear about with recreational we hear like promise people that live by schools there's all kinds of rules and where you can do it where you can't you know if you had a, a bar with where you could smoke into then kids can't go there work it you know there's all kinds of rules we're gonna wait and see what happens to the state you know, the state figures it out. You know, I think other states kind of figured it out, and they know the process. You know, we've got phone calls, emails, comments, people asking what to do. Wait and see what happens at the state level. When the state figures it out, say in a couple of years, say, okay, here's what okay, If you want to open up a restaurant, they know what to do. You open up a bar, here's the plan. So if you want to open a pot store, there's no plan. I mean, there's not like a, a set rule to say you have to do this, this, this. So, the thing is, the city's not making any money off it because all the taxes, you get a few tax, but the proper, the person who is a business, he makes money, and the state gets most of the taxes. So, I mean, it's not how is this beneficial to the city at all, from what I understand. So, anyway, good meeting and look forward to another great warm week. <laughs> Uh, one quick thing, which is tomorrow at 6 o'clock, there's a meeting on climate change and public health and the impacts of public health, excuse me, the impacts of climate change on health. Marquette County was selected as a special demonstration project for how to think about these impacts. Um, I've been to one or two of the preliminary meetings. There's issues around flooding. Uh, particularly if you're on well water and some of the things that might happen and as well as with warming temperatures and greater uncertainty, particularly in the winter times, even though like this week is, we can talk about why this week is happening, there's, there's a climate change reason. And um, the idea that we want to be proactive and that, Mar that Marquette County and our region was chosen as an example of how to be proactive around climate change and there's a chance to learn more tomorrow at 6 o'clock at Marquette Township is the meeting. And I'm going to be going, there's a special meeting during the day for city uh, officials that's going to be really interesting as well. So um, 
that's what's coming up before our next meeting on the 11th, and I hope folks will be able to attend. Thank you. A um, couple of closing comments. I think good meeting tonight, uh, particularly illuminating, of course, is we got the Parks and Recreation Plan passed. That's huge, uh, culmination of a lot of years of work. Uh, other two items that came out, maybe slid under the radar, was people having a chance to see what the Board of Appeals does and how they operate and how important it is. And likewise, how PIPAC operates, Presque Isle Advisory Committee, and all of the detail they get into in trying to wrestle with the issues that we do with that island that's so special to us. And really illustrative, too, I think, how citizens can be involved, how they can be part of those, those groups that do so much good for the city. Um, marijuana. I, I th there is no doubt in my mind that the city of Marquette is going to opt in to the program. It's going to happen. Uh, there's absolutely no doubt in my mind. I would be amazed if we do not. So let's put that one over here. But there are very, s but when people get up and say, look, it, it, it works well in, in other states in Massachusetts or Idaho or, or California or Colorado, so all we have to do is take that and put it here. I mean, that is inane. Because those states, that's a matter of policy as to how those states are operating, how they're doing it, how they specifically crafted the law in those situations and instances. What we're looking at, Michigan has to go through, is what fits Michigan? And how is the state of Michigan going to do it? And how are they going to enforce it? And then in turn, taking that down to the city level, and how will the cities do it that best fits our city? And we will have options within there of how it best fits. So the idea of just going pell-mell off and grabbing this and grabbing that and saying it's all good, uh, really, is, is, is not the way to go because you don't know where you're going. We need to do this thing deliberately and we need to do it right. And it's the end result that we're going to be graded by, not all the riffraff there as we get along there. I would caution people too when they talk about economic development and all the money we're going to have on this thing. Do the math. We have 68,000 people in Marquette County. What is the market? How many marijuana shops providing the drug and product will there be in the county? Don't know. Let's say there's five. You've got five shops, 68,000 potential audience members, and of course roughly what, maybe a third of those are, are school children. So now we're down to about 30,000. Now we call out the people that aren't going to use the drug anyway. So what are we down to? 1,000, 2,000, 10,000, 15,000? What's the market study show? Where's the business plan? And how does that culminate itself in all this money that's going to be there. So you need to s sharpen your pencils, sit down, do the business plan, find out what the real profit is, what the real tax base would be for the city of Marquette or any other community because this is easily a transportable exercise, and then you'll put to bed the idea of great economic development someday coming. That said, is all economic development good? Sure, probably it is. So every little bit helps but it's not going to be any great bonanza because the numbers aren't here. If we were down in Metro Detroit, Metro area, probably it's a whole different game, but that's not the game we've got here. So I leave you with that and I turn it over to the city manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, two comments. Uh, first of all, the marijuana question would be a, uh, I'll talk to the city attorney uh, in more detail tomorrow, but probably not any later than the February, the second meeting in February, which is the 25th. Um, the second comment is for anybody that's listening that is newly appointed to a committee, a subcommittee, we have an orientation for those committees Wednesday, this Wednesday at four o'clock here in commission chambers. We do this once a year for all new committee members. So if you're listening and belong to a new committee or just got on a committee, Margaret, take about an hour. That's all I have. Thank you.